that you will see me on a routine basis now. We are out surveying up the route. Uh, some point in time fairly soon, um, hope, hopefully a decision will be made as to who will get the contract. We're not sure exactly when or if that will occur, but we think it's soon. Uh, we will, at that time, we will do a pre-filing. Uh, pre-filing means that we're going to do a project. We'd like to do a project, and we're announcing that before FERC, and that will mean that the information that will be submitted to them in terms of stakeholders will start, that you will start being communicated with from FERC. Um, we, will, we hope to make a FERC application again if this project goes forward uh, in the uh, summer of 2015. We would like to see to get receive a FERC certificate in the summer of 2016. Uh, construction would start hopefully in 2017-2018. In service in my retirement, 2018. Wishful <laughs> thank you. Um, again, public participation in this activity is important. We sent survey notification letters to landowners within a 400 foot study corridor, 200 feet on either side of, of the imaginary center line. Uh, we've informed you, local officials, about the survey. Uh, we are currently meeting with boards of supervisors and county commissioners. Uh, we will start our open houses in September uh, with the construction 2017-2018. The last slide that I gave you is kind of a schematic of, uh, of what will take place if, once we pre-file the start of the process. You as a county commission have the right to become an intervener. Now, if you decide to be an intervener, and I would encourage you to become an intervener, then you have official status uh, with the pipeline and with the firm. You're able to comment, do the filings when they're filed by us, do the filings from refer, but that's how you can engage yourself in the process. Um, and I have other individuals that are with me that have the tech, technical expertise that can help answer any questions that you have or the audience has. Um, the last page is a website we created uh, where you can go online and if you have a question or you have one information, when we do filing, we'll put it on this website. And it'll be information that can be readily accessible. So that's um, the project. And again, I'm going to stress this is a potential project. We have not, no decision has been moved, made to move forward. But because of the timing of it, uh, we have to start um, the way we started the project uh, this past uh, spring. Okay. Any questions? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Um, so, it didn't quite take 15 minutes. I guess it's all the time for my questions. Um, I think we'll take the next uh, 10, 15 minutes or so if we need it for those commission questions. I guess uh, I'll start that off and just you know, jump in and um, uh, Some of the questions people have sent to me to ask, some mm -hmm. of them I thought um, were more important than others to try to, to answer you in the time I've given. Um, I guess some of my questions that overlap with some of those are um, the, the line is 42 inches. Mm -hmm. Now, I've heard um, information from some people that a pipeline this big has never been built before. I've also heard information that pipelines this big and much bigger have been built many times in the United States. Uh, can you give us some idea of um, what the, the level of difficulty is for, for this size pipeline and this length? Is it 550 miles? 500, yeah, 560. Well, that's a real good question. We built pipelines. I think the largest one that we built is 36 inches. Okay. Uh, we have a 36 inch line around uh, Washington, D.C., or the Cove Point area. We built a uh, 30 inch line uh, two years ago. Greg Struve uh, put that in and, uh, the northern panhandle of West Virginia. There have been 42 inch pipelines built uh, primarily coming out of the, um, in, in the in the lands of the Midwest. Um, obviously, the larger the pipeline, the heavier the pipeline, the heavier the pipe, uh, and the harder it is to build. We understand that that's a risk that we take, uh, but to serve this market, um, that's what the size of the, uh, that's the capacity that the market is is asking for uh, for us to deliver to. So we understand that this is not going to be an easy process. Uh, 
actually going to be a pretty exciting project for me uh, because I've not seen uh, this type of thing done in my career. I've seen 36 inch, I've seen 30, but it's an opportunity for me to see us, and I'm, there's no question in my mind uh, that we have the technical expertise to do it. I can do it right. Uh, I'm going to add to that, Bob. I'm Craig Park. I'm with the construction side of, of the company. Thank you. There, there's some, there is some 42 inch in, in the country that, that crosses, train, trains crosses the, the country itself. We actually tie into a 42 inch Kinder Morgan has over in the high, right at the high river. It's about 1,700 miles long. It, it pretty much crosses most of the, the central part of the United States, and there's quite a bit of 42 inch in the southern part of the country also. Mr. Park, that's your name? Yes, sir. Greg Park? Greg, yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So it's 42 mm -hmm. inches of largest that's built, period, in the United States at this point, or is there some other? Exactly, no, sir. I mean, the, you have the, uh, you have the Alaska pipeline and then other lines that are, you know, also bigger than that. And they, they propose pipelines all the way into the 50s, 50, 52 inch. They just got to build a line of Trinidad is 52 inch. Or 60, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, 60. They, the, the company, yeah, there's a, a huge company and right now. And the last coming into Kansas is talking about a 50 or 52 inch pipeline. It's 26 or 27 hundred miles long. And it's, it, the possible out there is just, you know, it takes, like Bob said, there's a lot more, it takes more people, it takes more equipment, you know, more, more ride with to make it safe to, to, to build. But, but it is possible, it just takes more time, more effort. Yeah, and more just to specialize people and put the Okay. Um, I guess the next question would be about the route, and, and I understand you just don't have a specific route selected yet. Um, I'm sure most of us in the room have seen many emails, many maps going around with various pipelines, uh, routes shown. Uh, you do have a a map that's on your website to show the a line. You say that's about a 400 foot corridor. The four we, what we do is we do a study. So in order, because we're not sure exactly where the center line will be, we like to study a 400 foot corridor. So when we do our threatened and endangered species, our wetlands investigation, uh, all the other studies that I mentioned, we like to do it on 400 foot corridor. That's not going to be the size of the right. The, 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 Easy. So, easy. Well, and tell us about the size of the right of way during construction. During construction, that the and it depends on the location. In certain areas where we can't get 120 feet of construction right of way, we probably won't do that. So a lot of it will depend, and that's why we're out there doing the 400 foot corridor. We need to be able to make sure that we can swing it back and forth. Uh, permanent right of way, which means we're going to establish a permanent right of way and allow that other growth area that we uh, cut back during the construction will be 75 feet. Okay. So that will be a permanent right of We uh, manage our right of ways uh, mechanically. So we cut them, we don't use herbicides. Uh, we we uh, use tractors or uh, lots of guys with weeders. You say about 120 feet temporary? Temporary, 125 feet. 125? <laughs> Uh, I suppose that most of the concerns uh, we're getting are, uh, at least I'm getting, are about the fears that people have uh, of not knowing where the pipeline will go. Uh, I'm sure there are, uh, you said there are 29 tracks here in the county, and I want to get to that question in a minute, but um, what about, the, there's going to be landowners who, are, who want to engage with this project and want to work with them, and that's good. What about uh, landowners who, we just don't want to come into the property. This 400 feet give you enough wood room to go around the property. Uh, is that the main coming to play at any time? These are some of the, the worst concerns we're getting. Well, we, we, I think we have a fairly good reputation in working with landowners. If we, we engage a landowner and they give us a very good legitimate reason for not being where on their property and we can't come to an agreement, we can't do this pipeline and, and there's we have a lot of options. You know, we can kind of move this back and forth here and there and, and sometimes it's be tempting to work with them or work around. If, at the very end of the day, and it doesn't happen very often, if we get a first certificate we have an eminent domain. And we don't exercise that unless it's a, it's a last resort option for us. 
Have you ever had to exercise in the name in West Virginia? Uh, yes, sir. Not that we don't, it's not something that we like to do, uh, but when, when you get to that point where you have 99.9 .9 miles of a 100 mile pipeline uh, brought out, permitted, uh, and we have that point one tenth of a percent uh, track that we can't work around um, at some point in time, then we uh, will exercise that domain. But that is an absolute last resort. And if uh, anyone else uh, wants to comment on that? Yeah, I think that Everybody wants to stand up. So. Thank you. 